Run it back nation. What is good? Six or sickos. What is good, man? Today at 2 p.m. is the deadline for Paul George to make his decision on his player option. Okay. Uh, there's the Paul George stuff. There's some Laurie Markin and stuff. And there's some Brandon Ingram stuff. And there's, you know, what are the Sixers? What, what options are left? And what do we realistically think they're going to do? Okay, thank you for being here. Give me a million likes on the video. Let's just get down to business. Let's try to put it all in chronological order from yesterday till right now. Okay, I'm here I'm here to help you out. If you don't have time to be surfing Twitter all day to figure this stuff out, I got you. Because I got time to be surfing Twitter all day. Okay? Unfortunately, because I hate Twitter. And most of the people on there piss me off. Here we go. First things first. The Clippers are not offering Paul George a max contract. That has come out several times now. They are basically refusing to give him the money that he wants. And it looks like they are actually trying to facilitate a sign-in trade. I know the rumors of that came out a couple days ago, but it's becoming more set in stone that there's a Paul George sign-in trade or opt-in and trade, whatever the technicality is. Somebody hit me up like it's not a sign-in trade. <laughs> well, actually... There's a Paul George opt-in trade, whatever you want to call it, uh, that's basically about to happen. And it's between, apparently it's between, you know, him going back to the Clippers, him uh, opting in and getting traded to the Warriors or the Sixers. Now, look, to, for me, the Sixers are out on that. That ain't happening. It's not Paul George, it's not, it's not Paul George to the Sixers. You know what I mean? Um, I do think that's still Daryl Morey's number one target, which is holding up the rest of things that are happening and the Sixers are sitting around and missing out on some opportunities because of Paul uh, Daryl Morey's obsession with Paul George. Have we seen this before? Have we seen this before? Remember Ben Simmons' situation? Daryl Morey missing out on opportunities because he was obsessed with James Harden? Here we go again. Here's what's about to happen. All the sources and things that I'm seeing is Paul George is about to get traded to the Warriors. That's set in stone. It's almost set in stone that Paul George is getting traded to the Warriors. Okay. So Daryl, you need to move on. All right. Now something fun that I just found real quick that I thought was funny was Stephen A. Smith, who knows nothing about anything, uh, just proves that once again, he says about Paul George, I just don't view him as a catch and shoot guy. Wow. Best catch and shoot three pointers among forwards this season. Number one, Paul George. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. 45.4% on catch and shoot threes. He shoots eight three pointers a game at 40 plus percent. He's literally the best catch and shoot three point shooter in the entire league. And Stephen A. Smith says, I just don't view him as a catch and shoot guy. Wow. You know, we got to start reviewing what these people are about to say before you put them on the air. You know, you know what? Keep it going. ESPN. Keep it going. Uh, Philly Sixers Galaxy, the reason this impacts so many different people are the teams that are involved in trying to get Paul George if he were to leave the Clippers. For example, you have the 76ers. They're obviously interested in signing Paul George. They have to hold on. They have to hold their other business, their other free agent aspirations until they see what Paul George's decision is. I think we're going to see a little bit of frozen deals until we get a move from him. And then once he does make up his mind with what he wants to do, then you will see a whole bunch of deals fall behind it. So Daryl Morey is sitting around like an idiot waiting for Paul George. Daryl Morey is in the friend zone. All right. Daryl Morey's the nerd at the high school cafeteria. That's obsessed with the cheerleader and she's dating the, the, the jocks, bro. You don't have a shot. Let it go. Go to drama club and, and, and find the girls. You know what I'm saying? That want to talk to you, bro. You're shooting out of your league. <laughs> I'm just giving advice here, real relationship advice. And Daryl Moore, you're shooting out of your bro. Stop. Let it go. You know what I mean? Damn, bro. Somebody left me a comment the other day that said this dude's this dude's analogies be on point. Yeah, I know. I got you, bro. You want more analogies? I got you. Yeah, Daryl's sitting around waiting, and he's gonna miss out on some shit. Okay. Uh, let's continue. Because, like I said, I hope Daryl Morey strikes out on Paul George. I do, because I want him to do other things. And then this comes out today. The Utah Jazz are open to listening to trade offers on Laurie Markkinen. 
And that is from Woj himself, which means the Jazz told Woj, hey, put this out there. Utah was seriously in on acquiring Mikel Bridges, and now teams wonder if they will pivot to sell. Utah would like to keep marketing in a perfect world, but teams are preparing aggressive offers. It would take a great, great deal to pry marketing out of Utah. I'll tell you what I would give for Laurie marketing if I'm the Philadelphia 76ers. I would give every single available first-round pick they have. I would give any young player they want. Ricky Council, I love you. I think you got potential. You're out of here. Uh, Paul Reed, if if you can manage a way to get rid of that, $7 million, I think they owe, you know, get rid of him. Uh, I'll give you Jared McCain, his entire TikTok account, every bottle of nail polish that he owns, and I'll deliver it to you personally. Get it done. If Daryl strikes out on Paul George, which I hope he does, he needs to be going all in on Laurie Markkinen. If the 76ers can land Laurie Markkinen, they are a championship contender, a solidified real deal championship contender if they can land Laurie Markkinen. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. And lastly... Uh, you know, DeJounte Murray got traded to the New Orleans Pelicans, and that changes the Brandon Ingram thing a little bit. I initially thought, why uh, are they now planning on keeping Brandon Ingram? Because they traded for DeJounte Murray. They gave up a couple first-round picks for DeJounte Murray. Um, but then, you know, some people are telling me their skill sets overlap. They both work in the mid-range, things like that. I don't know. Uh, but I think the Pelicans should still be trying to trade Brandon Ingram but I would understand if they kept Brandon Ingram because if you're trading Ingram uh I mean you're trading Ingram to to break up the Zion Ingram thing and try to move forward with a healthy Zion uh, Zion Williamson which makes sense DeJounte Murray and Zion Williamson is a damn good tandem and you should probably now that I think about it again you should probably trade Brandon Ingram and try to fill out the roster in other ways so If Daryl Morey strikes out on Paul George and can't land Laurie Markkinen, the third option here right now for the 76ers still is Brandon Ingram. And if they can't do those two things, he needs to trade for Brandon Ingram. Straight up. He has to. He has to. He has to. He has to. Because the Philadelphia 76ers can't come out of this offseason with just a 21-year-old TikToker and uh, Kelly Oubre re-signing or something. Like, they have to make moves. They have to. You you know, they cannot. They can't do nothing this offseason. They can't, bro. It's happened too many years in a row for Daryl Morey. They got to get it done. This from Woj. Uh, The Pelicans would like to get an extension done, but this is a new world with this salary cap. The idea that they'd be able to max out Brandon Ingram a second time becomes difficult with the roster they have. Their intent is to try to keep him, but there is still uncertainty. So I think, personally, this is the Pelicans driving up the price for Brandon Ingram by telling Woj, hey, tell everybody, you know, that we want to keep him. We don't want to trade him. Um, So they're just trying to drive up the price for Brandon Ingram. I do think they're going to trade him. Uh, But I, I I think... My number one right now since that Jazz uh, news came out is Laurie Markkinen. That's my number one right now. And I think Paul George is going to the Warriors, and I think the Sixers need to trade everything they possibly can to land Laurie Markkinen. Um, If they can't, you can get Brandon Ingram for, for lesser of a price, and I still think that's a really good third option. I still think Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, and Brandon Ingram have a chance at a championship if you can fill out the roster in other ways uh, with cap space. But, you know, if they don't do all three of these, if they don't do either of these three things, if there's no Paul George, there's no Laurie Markin, and there's no Brandon Ingram, Sixers are fucked. Again. One of these three things has to happen or the Sixers are fucked. Give me all your thoughts and opinions in the comments. 
I'm out.